coming to him, there is a blessing. So even as we have signed it, but I think that personally, we will not do it as a song, but we will speak it one on one to the Lord and say, God, oh Heavenly Father, everlasting King of glory, I surrender my all to you. I surrender my family. I surrender my life. I surrender my job. I surrender to you, Father God. Oh, rendezvous seeker, our shanta. When we say we surrender to him, we're saying, Lord, I'm moving out of the way. I'm letting go of control. Take control. When we say you surrender, you're saying, Lord, I'm waiting on you to make a decision on this situation, and I will follow you. When you surrender, you surrender it to the one that can lead you, and so this morning as we send that song, will you surrender to Jesus? Surrender all. Surrender your profession. Surrender your career. Surrender your plan to the will of God, to the plan and purpose of God. When you surrender to him, I guess the next question will be, Lord, what would you have me to, to glorify your name? I want you to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, Father in heaven, I have surrendered to you. Now I'm asking you, Father, what would you have me do to glorify your name in my life? To glorify your name in this church, what would you have me do, O oh God? To lift up your name, to manifest your power in this place. What will you have me do in my household, in my community? What would you have me do with my friends, O oh God? What would you have me do, Daddy God? Daddy, what would you have me do this coming week? This coming week, as we're stepping into this week, today is Sunday, tomorrow is Monday. The Father, the official beginning of the week in the secular world. What would you have me do, Daddy? What would you have me do? Speak to me, direct me, lead me. Tell him, hold my hands, Jesus. Hold my hands, Father. Lead me, help me to hear you, and help me to obey you. Hallelujah. Say, help me to obey you. Help me to obey you. Help me to obey you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we are thanking you. Yes, Jehovah God, we know that in obeying you, there is blessing, so oh God. And so this week, Father, as we surrender to you, we're asking that you guide us, and we ask that you will give us the grace to obey you, Father God. Whether we read the instruction from the Bible, whether we hear the word of God as it's being preached, or whether the Holy Spirit ministered to our spirit one and on one, we're asking you, Daddy, give us the grace to obey your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And Father, Lord, right now, I surrender to you, Jehovah God, and I ask you to just use me, Daddy God, use me to speak what you want us to hear today. In the name of Jesus, and may your word be like the fire and like the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces in Jesus' name. Come under the blood of Jesus and under the fire of the Holy Ghost as a protective shield. And the word of God, Father, today, will bless us and gladden our heart and change us for the better in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please have your seats. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thank God for the honor of standing here this afternoon to share the word of God. I want to bless God and recognize Pastor Solomon in the house. I recognize um, our Uncle Leke and everybody, every one of us here, we just want to thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We give God glory. Can you clap to the Lord for me this morning? Just give me a clap for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want to thank God. Thank the press team, you know, the music team. And, you know, every Sunday, every day, we go to extend to prepare to come here and give God glory. And we want to thank God that he's receiving it. God is doing something with us, amen. amen. And he will minister grace to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the past few weeks, the Lord has been speaking to me about the blessing of God. 
And I know that I, I kept feeling that I need to, that's what God wanted me to share this period. But I really never got to it. So this particular time, I started asking God again, what would you have me share? And the Lord said, share about the blessing of God. The word blessing is very wide and very broad. And it can mean so many things. But one thing I know about the word blessing is that anytime you hear blessing, it makes you feel good. Amen? Amen. 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 There is everything good about blessing. Nobody here wants to be cursed, right? Yes. Everybody here wants to be blessed. If you step out there and somebody say bless you, you say thank you and you'll be happy. But if you go out there and what you hear is somebody cursing at you, you get upset. And if you're a child of God, what would you say? I reject it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Curses are never to be received. But blessings are always welcome. Amen? Amen. Say, so I welcome the blessing of God, I the blessing of God in, my life, in my life every time. In Jesus' name. Well, I always like to check, you know, the kind of literary meaning or the uh, meaning of, of the word some, a lot of times when I want to share. And um, yes, I didn't check the Greek and all that, okay? But I know that I went to the dictionary and I said, let me just look at it, even though I know what a blessing is. But the, the word that I received or what I saw is I said, a blessing means God's favor and protection. Amen. Amen. Blessing means God's favor and protection. And while blessing will always, blessing is the gift of God's grace that brings happiness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It invokes God's favor on a person. When I, last time I was sharing with one of my sons and I said, you know, you should always, once in a while, put a, a little gift in your hand and tell the person that has the spiritual authority over you or your parent or somebody and say, bless me. Amen? Amen. Put something, let them, because anytime you receive blessing, it is an everlasting thing. Blessing, oh my goodness, blessing, well, you will never have an excess of blessings. Blessings opens you up for good things. And you know, when you sow a seed of blessing, it never dies. Hallelujah. Just the same way as a, a curse never dies, blessings never die. So instead of going around packing up curses, I want to go around and pack up blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So most people quantify material goods as a blessing. But a blessing is much more than material good. Are you in agreement with me? Yes. A blessing is much more than wealth, material wealth, things we can touch. Uh, you know, sometimes one might be so rich. Why a blessing will always come with material wealth and other things? Material wealth may not be a blessing. Material wealth of itself may not be a blessing because uh, sometimes people get wealth in so many ways and their wealth might even become a curse to them, to their generations that are yet to come. So every time we talk about blessing, don't just be myopic and just put it around wealth. Open your eyes and see much more. Amen. Because blessings is much more greater and better than any wealth that you can handle. I want to just, uh, I'm going somewhere, I may not finish this today, but I'm trying to lay foundation, so please come with me, okay? And, 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 and I believe that the Lord will open up your eyes and even this will what your desire to go and search more. And because when you find out a blessing and what it is, you will never stop looking for blessings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So first of all, I just wanted to um, go to Revelations. Let's go to Revelations chapter 3. I have a lot of scriptures, so if you can help me I will appreciate it. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17. If you are there, you can just 
stand up and read it for us. Um, hallelujah. Revelation 3, 17. Revelation 3, 17, it says, Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that you are wretched, wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel you to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. So when I said that every wealth is not a blessing, you understand what I mean? Some blessings, blessings that are gotten in the wrong way, blessings that have stood in the way of serving God, not blessing wealth, that have come in the way of serving God. Wealth that makes you to ignore God and not even to know who God is. It's not really a blessing, it's a curse. And when God looks at that one, God sees wretchedness. Um, last Friday, we were praying for a certain nation. And the nation is one of the, uh, it's a first world country. They are rich materially, they are very good, but the Lord said they are very poor. Why are they very poor? Because in that particular nation, the real Christians, the people that are really serving God, is like 0.5%. A nation of millions. And so even though they have material wealth, they are wretched. And you know what? When we were praying, the Spirit of God revealed that the rate of suicide in that nation is high. Well, after we finished the prayer, I went to research, and it is actually confirmed that in that wealthy nation, they are one of the highest, their nation is the one of the highest nations where suicide, the rate of suicide is very high and it said it's still rising. So no matter how much money they have, no matter how much wealth they have material, people are committing suicide. So why would blessed people commit suicide? You realize that that nation is wretched. That nation is poor like Jesus explained it in the book of Revelation. And they need help to come into the blessing of the Lord. So in, on, on that contest, let's go to Proverbs. Somebody open Proverbs for me. Proverbs chapter 10, 22, and just read it real quick, please. I need help. Whoever has it, read it. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow. Read it again for me, please. The blessings of the Lord make, makes rich, and he adds no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord makes rich, and adds no sorrow with it. Amen? Amen? So you understand what I mean by the fact that mere wealth or riches is not blessing of itself. Because when God gives us blessing, it will give us riches and other things, and there will be no sorrow to it. If somebody is happy and that things are going well, will they ever contemplate suicide? No. We've heard about, even in this country, rich, popular people who end up committing suicide. You will think that since they have anything that money can buy, that they will not commit suicide. There won't be any problem in their lives. But most of the time, they leave a message or something, I can't take it no more. What can they take no more? If, if riches alone were a blessing, if the wealth of this world were a blessing, then they would not be committing suicide. Amen. Praise God. So you realize that blessing is the opposite of a curse. And I'm bringing it to the context of godly blessing, of course. Because the only blessing we talk about is the blessings from God. Only God can bless. Satan does not have any business of blessing. Satan will always curse. <coughs> God blesses. And there is a curse in a disobeying God. But God is a blessing God. Amen? Tell your neighbor, God is a blessing God. God, is a blessing God. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Yes. 
Okay, give somebody a high five. God is a blessing, God. Hallelujah. Now we want to just look at Genesis real quick. Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to divide it. Everybody will help me this morning because it's a lot of scriptures. So somebody pick up, Je Nandi, let me give it to you. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. Uh, Christian, Genesis chapter 4, 10 to 12. I'm going to give that next time I will give somebody else. Um, Uncle Eki, will you be able to read for us Genesis chapter 1, 21 to 22? Okay, just hold on to it. You read it later. I just want you to be ready, but not yet. Thank you, sir. Okay, so Namdi, please read. Genesis 3. Yes. Genesis 4, 10 to 12. Please borrow the mic from Chijin. Okay, go ahead. Yours is Genesis 3, 14 to 19. Then the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. She, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten to the, of the tree, of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of. Curse is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you will take it. For you are dust, and dust you shall return. Amen. Amen. So you see, this is curse, and this was coming from God. Why was Adam and Eve and the serpent cursed? Disobedience. Okay? Disobedience brings curses. Now, let's look at chapter 4, 10 to 12. Another curse. Just want you to know, before we even go to blessings, you see what curse means and why we need to stay away from curses. It doesn't bless. Come, read it. 10 to 12. The Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's innocent blood is crying out to me from the ground for justice. And now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's shed blood from your hand. When you, when you cultivate the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength. It will resist producing good crops for you. You shall be fugitive and a vagabond, roaming aimlessly on the earth and in perpetual exile without a home, a degraded outcast. Amen. I think you also read the, the commentaries. Okay. But look at that. That was the, the curse of Cain. When he killed Abel, God, he received a curse. And you see, it, what, is there any good thing that you saw in that curse? There's nothing good in curses. But I want you to know that right from the beginning of creation, God meant to bless mankind. God even created us for a blessing. Amen? Amen? God was excited when he created man. And even when he created all the creations. Blessing is associated with God. Because blessings will make you happy, relaxed, peaceful. None of this is attributable to curses or even the enemy. The enemy will never, 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 never bless you. Anybody that gets in association with Satan, let's say the cultists, those people that go to the enemy because of wealth and associate with him, you can get all the wealth in the world, but you are cursed because you will never enjoy that wealth. You will not have peace and you will find out that there's problems. There will be problems in their households. 
Okay? And then they're leaving a curse for their children. And of course, when eternity comes, they are going to spend eternity in hellfire with Satan. So nothing that comes from Satan is a blessing. Amen. Well, you see that from the beginning, God bestowed the blessings on creation, even including mankind. Now I need Uncle Leke to read Genesis 1, verse 21 to 22 for us. Chisom, you will read the same chapter 1, 26 to 28. Okay, Chisom? All right. And uh, Chiji, uh, chapter 2, 2 to 3, Genesis. Amen. Please, can you give Uncle Leke the mic? We can help him. Are you good? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God created great wells and uh, everything. Everything creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly. After their kind and every winged fowl, after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the, the water in the seas and uh, let fowl multiply in the earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. The blessing of God to the creatures. Okay, Chisholm, please, 26 to 28. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You see the blessing of God from the beginning. Give the mic to CJ. So she can read. You know you are right. Genesis 2, 2 to 3. So you see how God, even from creation, He created us for blessing. Amen. He created us for a blessing. God has a wealth of blessings. And he's always willing and very generous with blessings. He blessed the created things. And when man came in the picture, he released a great blessing upon man. Okay, go ahead. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Amen. Amen. Even blessing days, everything that comes in the pathway of God receives a blessing of God. Amen. Amen. Everything that God puts out there is crowned with a blessing. And when God blessed the days, he blessed the day for mankind. When God blessed the creatures, he blessed them for mankind because at the end of the day, he said we should have dominion over all of them. Amen? Amen. God gave us dominion. God gave us the right to, the, the, you know, dominion is to have authority, to rule. He also encouraged us to multiply. He also encouraged us to tend and take care of the created things of God. When you look at this blessing, I want you to just look at it. Because we're going into the Bible to see how God has blessed people. You know, after God created mankind and blessed mankind, when you saw what happened in the Garden of Eden, we read it earlier, man disobeyed God and attracted what? Curses. But even after that, God did not give up on man. He began to walk and he made another plan. And his plan, the ultimate plan, is the plan of redemption of man. Okay? But he picked a man, he picked a man out of the whole earth, out of the hidden. And I always believe that we 
when God picks somebody, he sees the heart. So I always felt, even though it was not recorded, there must have been something special about Abraham. He must have been an honorable man. He must have been somebody that God knew I can walk with him. His heart can be flexible with me. When he understands me, he will do what I say. Well, that's just my belief. God picked Abraham, and we see what, how God began to deal with Abraham. It's Genesis chapter 12. Can I ask you please, Pastor Solomon, can you help us as well? Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. And you see that God, God called him to make a deal. The God that created man, God that could have done anything, went to, to man to make a deal with man. Beat the one that he knew will obey him. You understand what I mean? He could have picked anybody. And he knew that if he picked anybody and they disobey, he would rather bring curses. So he had to look for the one that will obey him and pick him. Okay, sir, please. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a mighty nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse of thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God. I, I heard a man of God say one time that God went to make a deal with Abraham. God called a deal with Abraham, and Abraham was no fool. He knew when he saw a good deal. There's a deal right there. God said, come out. If you come out from your people, if you separate your people, if you forget your father's own house, and come to follow me, and come to walk with me, and come to hear me, and serve me, and do the things that I want you to do, not the traditions of your people. You know that Abraham was from the home of the Chaldeans, and over there they used to worship the sun. I believe so. The sun god. So God said, forget about the gods of your father. Forget all that and come. I will show you how to serve me. If you do that, I will make you great. Amen? Amen. I will make you great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless them who bless you. And curse them who curse you. Can you imagine? Who doesn't want to be in that kind of a place? Where if you bless me, God will bless you. If you curse me, God curses you. That means the curse will not come to me, but that curse will go back to you. But if you bless me, I will be blessed. And then you also receive a blessing from God. That was too nice. He said, I will make you a great nation and make your name great. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And we know that that was not a small promise. It wasn't just the promise of, oh, the, the Jews, wherever the Jews go, they prosper and they bring a blessing to the nations. And so, no, 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 no. It was a plan of eternal life. He was telling him that eventually the Savior of the world will come from your loins, from your lineage. The one that will bless the whole people of the earth. Is Jesus not a blessing to us? In Abraham, he came through Abraham, the one that became a blessing to the whole world. So it was too good for Abraham to pass out. He was smart enough to know that this is a great deal. This is a deal of a lifetime. A deal of blessing is a deal of a lifetime. To be a carrier of a blessing. You want to know what Abraham left his father's house with? It wasn't much. He left with the few servants he had. Okay, he left and Lot followed him, Lot and his family. But he didn't really didn't have much. He couldn't even fight. Abraham was just living and became a sojourner. But he was carrying one thing. What was he carrying? Blessing. The blessing. He had a package. And that was blessing. And that blessing, excuse me, when Abraham left his father's house, 
God did not give him and say, there's so much multitude of camels out there right now. Take them and go. Take everything that your father has and go. Take all your inheritance. Take, take the world, the treasure. Of. He said, just walk out. Walk out. He was not living with gold or silver. He was not living with anything. He lived with the promise of a blessing. The promise of a blessing. And I want you to understand that Abraham lived with a promise of a blessing. But he knew that the one that has promised is faithful. What has God promised you? You must stand firm. And go with that blessing promise that God promised you. And you must know that he that promised is faithful. He did not start dealing with mankind today. It's been a long time. And the history shows that when he commits a deal with you, he keeps the deal. Amen? When he cuts a deal with you, it's a sure deal. So you might even want to go to God and say, God, I want to make a deal with you. Because any deal we will make with God, as long as you keep your portion of the deal, will attract the blessing. And you will harvest blessings until eternity. So Abraham, Abraham just left. Left the place and began to travel. As soon as he left and began to obey God, God showed up to him. God proved himself to him. The pathway of blessing will not always be smooth, but God will always show up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. God will always, one thing is, He will always show up. He will always show up. I believe I'll just go on um, the same chapter 12. I'm sorry. Let me read now from verse 5. I'm going to soon stop, but please, let's come next week because... I will be able to round up when we can stay past, you know, we're looking at our time. So Genesis, oh my goodness, I keep going back and forth. I want to, the same chapter 12, as Osolo, can you help me more from verse 5 to 8? Oh. And, and Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lord his brother's son, and all their substance they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He came up, and as soon as he left, God began to show him. God began to release inheritance unto him. God began to unpackage, and I let him identify. Not that he had given it, but he had... He had um, testimony. He had a token because up there he pitched his tent. He took part. He kind of claimed the blessing of God. You know, sometimes we tell you, claim it. Stand on it. Claim the blessing. God spoke it. Abraham claimed it. And even worshipped God there at Bethel. And Bethel is the house of God. And you know that that was the first place that he pitched a tent. That was the first place that he stood and set an altar. When God met with him on that mountain. And up to now, or at least in those days, Bethel was very important. And I'm sure up till now, it's still an, a very important place. And it's a high place of spiritual activity. Anytime you step in there, you have an encounter with God because it's even called the house of God. Amen? Now, when Abraham was walking and started walking in the pathway of blessing, like I said, everything was not 100% A-okay. Well, he was a blessed man. Yes, he's blessed. But his wife was barren. He's blessed. But he's moving from place to place. He's sojourning on strange lands. He met famine. He left where he 
was, it wasn't recorded that he was suffering in the, in the place of his father's where he was. But as soon as he started traveling, he even went in a place where there was famine. And when there is famine, there's lack of food, lack of sustenance. Okay? And so there was hunger staring them in the face. In some of the places, they basically just continue to move from place to place. So in the pathway of blessing, you may meet some mountains. In your pathway of blessings, you may meet some obstacles. There may be some unpalatable conditions or situations. But one thing you must know is that they are not perpetual. There is a package that is going to be unfolded for you. It never takes away from the fact that you are the blessed of the Lord. Because God spoke so much about you, and you see some hindrances and obstacles that have not changed what God said about you, have not removed you from the blessing of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's just a pathway to get what He's getting you. At the appropriate time, the promise of the blessings of God will mature, and you start to reap from the blessings. You see, even while He was walking, He didn't even know that. Part of the things that held back with his blessings was his company. The company that he picked. He took Lot and Lot's family. Even though it was he that God appeared to. It was his heart that God searched out. When you read the scripture and you read about Lot, you'll find out that when Lot was not all, you know, he was just walking after the testimony of Abraham. That's how I will see it. Okay? It wasn't bad, but his whole heart was not for God and for God. He was looking at where the pastures were better for him. I said that with Lot, he had to part ways with Lot because of the problems. He's the blessing of God. Why did he part ways with Lot? There was a disagreement. There was quarrel. Between him and Lot, between his people and Lot, they were fighting and struggling over property. And he's the one that carried the blessing of God. Yet there's no peace, no peace. Because when he's quarreling with his nephew, that means there was no peace. But look what happened in, in the same scripture. In in um Hallelujah. Oh, Abraham and Lot, chapter 13, or Genesis chapter 13, from verse 5. It says, And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks, herds, and tents. And the Lord was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. So now they had, they had substance. Now he had wealth. And yet with the riches, family problems. Yet with the riches, family problems. Yet he is still the blessed of the Lord. But in his wisdom, in his blessing, God also gave him wisdom. And so verse 6 says, And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell there together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray you, between me and you, between my herdmen and your herdmen, for we are brethren. Verse 9, is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I pray you, from me. If you will take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you depart to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you come unto Zah. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from other green pastures. Sometimes we make choice because we see the advantage. We see, you know, the green pastures. We, see, we don't even look to God to ask him the direction. As soon as you look and you see there's money, things are going well, and then you leave and go there, but you don't know where you're going into. Yesterday I was watching a documentary on Sodom and Gomorrah. And this Sodom and Gomorrah, this 
place that was described as the garden of God. Very luscious, very green, things going well, and there were plants, and that's why uh, Lot chose that place. Lot saw the greenery and saw that the whole place looked so nice, he decided to choose that because Abraham told him to choose. He chose what his eyes would see. But years later, a few years later down the line, that whole place was destroyed. Because in looking at the things that his eyes desired, he entered into a place of sin. Into a place that their sin was so bad that it attracted the wrath of God, that God rained down fire and ashes. And even up to today, there is no life in that place. Is all filled with ashes. So they seen sulfur and they see some salt kept up. And if you go there and you touch the, the rock, they just break down. You know, it's, it's ash. Up till now, they said they, from, 19, from 2014, the scientists discovered that place. They could still see the some of the houses, but they're all salt. You know how um, uh, Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt. It was the whole salt, the whole sulfur, the brimstone, the calcium that was run down on that city that came on her and turned her and just made her powder. And she stood as a pillar of salt. So that's what's happening on that land. But looking with his eyes, human eyes, that was where he chose. And years later, it was destroyed. Now, Abraham chose the less because the one that didn't look so good, so promising, when you're looking at things, and you know, when we do these things, we're, we're studying, we're preaching, we're sharing the word so that we can learn and be wiser in serving God and in making decisions. Every time you make decisions, you don't always have to look for where the ground is greener. You look for where God is taking you. If God said go to the greener pasture place, go, the blessing will be there. But if God said don't go and you go, you will go there and the greens will dry up. Abraham went to took the other part. And I think it even saddened Abraham because God came to him and even said to him, Abraham, don't worry. I am your reward. Right? What did he say? No. Okay, let me just go to the Bible. Let me not try to. Verse 14 of chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, to you will I give it, and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, turn in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. You see, Abraham's walk was a walk with God. And so every path he took was a step closer to the blessings that God promised him. Every time he walked, you realize that he made a difference when he made the decision. He did not say to Lord, okay, I am your uncle. I am older than you. I'm the one that God called. I'm the one that brought you here. So because of that, we're going to separate. But I'm going to take this place that is so green and full. I'll take the better place and you take the bad place. In his heart of righteousness, in his honorable heart, he decided, let peace reign. Take the one you want. I'll take whichever one is left. And that, word, that was what moved God to come back and assure him of the blessing. So as much as he was encountering challenges, he was also walking into his blessing. And that which seemed like it was a problem was actually a blessing in disguise because God began to make a difference. Amen? God began to make a difference in his life. As soon as he walked away, well, the work of God, you begin to see that at the appropriate time, the blessings of God will come. As, as the blessing package 
is being unwrapped. He has already become rich. He didn't have still have a child. He's still moving from place to place. But yet, he has become so powerful that few few months later, he had to go and rescue Lot from, the, from a king that captured the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah. God gave him the strength. He had few men. And these were like five kings with their armies that came and captured the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah and took the Lord with them. And yet Abraham, as few as they were, was able to go and fight and rescue these people from the kings and destroy them. Why? Because he carried God's blessing. Amen? Amen. The blessing of God will always give you favor and God's protection. Once you have God's protection, you will win every battle. Amen? Amen? Because God will raise armies for you. So you begin to see the blessing of God unfolding in the lives of Abraham. At some point, he, he encountered the priest of the Most High God. And he also blessed him. But when you look at the blessing of Abraham, we've not really gone there. You realize that God kept repeating the same blessing. If you actually go to Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28, that is the blessing of mankind. That is the blessing that God had for man that he transferred to Abraham. And so just come and separate yourself unto me and I will make you a great name. I'm going to close here. Next week we continue. We will still get that, but I want you to come with that mindset. The something God said to Abraham, he is still saying to all mankind today, separate yourself from me. Amen? Mm -hmm. Separate yourself from me. Let go of the, your comfort zone. Let go of the things that you think are great. And follow me with all your heart. And as you follow me, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm stopping here because of time, but we will come more and then you will see why God, God's promise is to Abraham is still your promise. God's invitation to take partake of the package of blessing is still for you and me today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to stop here now. Please stand up with me. I want you to pray and say, God, begin to please let me realize this, this relationship with you where I can walk away from anything that will hinder my blessing so that you begin to unwrap the blessing package over my life. I don't know what touched you in this world, but usually when we preach and you receive a word, you need to pray and receive it into your spirit. You need to pray and say, God, I like this one. You also need to remove the ones that are not good. Perhaps you see that you have that kind of nature that Lot has. Now you have to wake up and understand that everything that glitters is not gold. And so you, wanna, you might want to just drop some of those things. You want to drop them and say, nah, ah, 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 I don't want to end up like Lot. Lot did not end well. Lot was a believer. He believed the God of Abraham. But he did not serve him with wholeheartedly. And when I say wholeheartedly, I'm not saying he sinned. But there are some, some things in him, like that greed, the desire to have it all, the desire to have the best. As much as of the opportunity that I have, I want to just go for the best without considering other people. Let me take care of myself first. If you have that kind of attitude, you need to change it. That was this attitude of, um, uh, what's his name, Lot. And it did not get him into good places. It took him into places where God did not like. Yes, he separated himself, but because he was in their midst, their style and their character affected his children. He lost his children. He lost his grandchildren to Sodom and Gomorrah. They were destroyed. He lost his upcoming children to Sodom and Gomorrah because even though his two youngest daughters came out of Sodom and Gomorrah with him, what did they do eventually? They came with the lifestyle of Sodom. They committed incest. They, 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 they gave their father a strong drink. And he slept, and they went and slept with their father. We must watch it. 
as much as we're walking in the pathway of blessing, we also need to drop every attitude, every lifestyle that will remove us from that path. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I just want you to pray for yourself. Take a minute and just pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I want your blessing. The blessing of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. I do not want to go after the blessing, the things that I see. Because everything that glitters is not gold. Lead me. We sang this song. I surrender all to you. Yes, Jehovah, as we surrender, unpack the blessings. Unpack the blessings, Jehovah. Unpack the blessings for us in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that we begin to know when to step away, when to separate ourselves and just click to you in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, because you're a faithful God. When you make a promise, you never change your mind. For you are faithful and you are true. Father, we bless you, Lord. We honor your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, please.